are just a little bit smaller than the first. So that's how I say words correctly. Uh, the welcome guys, Karis, Esther, uh, Dan, 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 Daniel, Daniel. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, let's prepare our hearts for worship. And as we prepare our hearts, let's just uh, kind of take a couple seconds to meditate on this uh, passage. Oh, send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and your dwelling. Thank you, Justin.
good his loving kindness towards me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever, despite not the works of your own hands. Good job, Esther. Thanks, Claire. Yeah. Thank you so much, Esther. That was great. Now, uh, let's just pray real quick. Uh, Tiffany, Father, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for uh, just bringing us here and uh, allowing us uh, to get through this week and to uh, enjoy a new week and the entry into a new month starting tomorrow. Uh, Lord, uh, as we, we uh, go into this time of just uh, learning about your word, uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, Harry and Jenny, you guys uh, slipped in at the last moment. I was like, oh, I wonder if they're, they're coming today, but, but you guys made it so cool. Uh, and Esther's in second service, paradoxically, even though she's, she's been coming to first for the last little bit. But, but thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for uh, just reading the word of God to us and, and allowing us to receive that. That was brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, so who was here last, uh, Dan, Dan and Karis, you were here last week, right? Dan, uh, Daniel, do you, prefer, do you prefer Dan or Daniel? Do you care? Uh, you don't care, okay. Dan is just easy for me. Uh, I feel like that will call me. Uh, uh, and, and Esther was here last week as well. Uh, do you guys remember kind of what we talked about last week? Or who we talked about last week? Put it that way, because we're kind of focusing on certain characters. Esther, do you remember? David. David, perfect, wonderful, good job. And then uh, Daniel, do you remember kind of what we talked about, David? What would you remember what the story was that we read? Let's put it that way. Actually, uh, I don't remember we talked about King Saul. We did talk about King Saul. Yeah, that's right. Good. I, I like that because because we need to know context for what's going on with David, right? For sure. Perfect. That's awesome. Uh, Terrence, do you remember what story we talked about? I can't remember like, David being like not so great. Yeah, per, you, you're jumping ahead of what I was going to, but that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So we talked about uh, uh, the story of where he was anointed, right? Uh, and and he's barely in that story, but it's it's very interesting. And and we talked about David, and and like you said, Karis, right? It was that say it one more time, sorry. David wasn't doing so great. Yeah, David wasn't perfect, right? So the, the story we read didn't really reveal that he wasn't uh, a perfect and great, but the, if you, you read on in the story of David, he's kind of got some issues, right? He doesn't do everything perfectly, okay? Uh, but what what was unique, what was significant about David, despite the fact that he didn't always do perfect? Uh, uh, what was, what, why did God choose David? Do you guys remember that? Jenny, how about you? I don't know. He's like he was like the youngest son, and he was like, the, yeah. he just seemed like the least likely to be called upon. Definitely, and God just kind of has a habit of doing that. But there's something special when, when we read in the story, right? So so uh, uh, Jesse, David's dad, brings out the first son, right? And Samuel looks at this guy, and he's he's apparently a good-looking guy, and, and Samuel's like, "This has got to be the guy, right?" You guys remember that part? Yeah. And then what God says, hey, like, don't look on the outward appearance. I don't look on the outward appearance. I look upon the Come on, guys. heart. Heart. There we go. Okay. <laughs> look upon the heart. And so David, you know, he, he's not, when we look at David and we look at his life, we don't see a life that we're like, oh, man, I want to do everything just like David because David was almost a mob boss by the end of his life. Like, I don't want you guys to become mob bosses, Okay. Not a good life plan, uh, but 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 perpetually we see David have a contrite heart. He he wants to desire after God. He he tries to be uh, uh, loving, and and honestly, most of our psalms are, are attributed to him. And you just see his heart after God. Mm. And so, despite the fact that he he didn't do everything perfectly, he he sought after and desired God, as I hope for you guys, because we don't honestly do everything perfectly. Again, hopefully we're not going as bad as David is. But that's why we, we, every week, we have that little time of confession, right? And just praying and just saying, God, I didn't do everything perfect, but, but, but I, I want you. I want more of you. I want to be more like your son. And so we pray and we confess our sins and we say, let's, let's 
keep going. And it's that kind of similar idea. Okay, so now we're talking about Solomon. And who's Solomon? He's David's son, right? David's son. <clears throat> and we're, we're really sticking in uh, 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 First Kings chapter 8, if you guys want to kind of uh, uh, be there. It's okay if you uh, don't have a Bible. <clears throat> uh, but, but so Solomon is, uh, he, he wants, he, he's doing, uh, 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 what is he doing right now? He's building a temple, right? So what was, what, what was the situation before the temple? Do you guys know? We haven't really talked about it, but, but do you guys have an idea of what was up with, like, uh, uh, well, actually, before we talk about that, what, what is the temple? What, what, what's the point of it? What do you do at the temple? Sean, what's the, what's the temple? What, what is the point of it? To, to, to worship God. Perfect, excellent, right? It, it's a place where, where you do uh, 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 sacrificing, where you worship. You, you, uh, there are certain festivals that you're actually supposed to come and, and, and do uh, uh, stuff at the temple, right? And it's this, this central uh, uh, place where you worship God, right? Uh, and, and it's a building. But so before uh, uh, there was this, this temple building that, that Solomon built, do you guys kind of know what the situation was before? Sean, I know you know, because you're here last night. Uh, so if you guys remember a few weeks ago, uh, when Leighton was here, Leighton talked about uh, uh, how the, the after they, the Israelites exited, they exodus out of Egypt, uh, they were kind of, they were in the wilderness. And they were in the wilderness for a while. We kind of vaguely talked about that. And when you're in the wilderness and you're moving around a lot, uh, you're, you're, it's called being nomadic, okay? It's the term for it. And, and when you're a nomad, like, what kind of buildings do you use? Because you don't want something like this kind of building, right? This would be really hard to move around. So what kind of buildings do you use when you're nomadic? Tents, perfect. Yeah, the tents, exactly. And so, so before there was this this building of the temple, there was a, a tent. Uh, uh, it had a special name. If anybody knows it, off the top of their head. Cool. That's okay. It's called a tabernacle. It's called the tabernacle. So the tabernacle was what was used by the Israelites while they were in the wilderness. And while the, while they've come into the land and they've been kind of established for a little bit, it hasn't been. You know, they, they haven't built a temple yet. And as a, a, um, we, we kind of see in chapter 5, as Esther read for us, uh, we, we see that there, there's this kind of interaction between Hiram, the king of Tyre, and Solomon. And one of the things that Solomon says is that, like, you know, he, he asks uh, uh, in this passage, we, we kind of see this uh, later on uh, in chapter 5, is that he's, he's asking Hiram to help build the temple. And, uh, uh, but, but it's, he's saying it's time. Right, and so uh, uh, to build the temple, David in Second Samuel chapter eight wanted to build the temple, uh, but there, you know, uh, uh, there's this just this great interchange where, where David says, you know, he, he built a palace for himself and that he wants to build a temple, um, but God stops him and God's, you know, God's like it's, you know, there's there's too much conflict, there's too much uh, uh, stuff going on. There, there kind of needs to be a sense of peace and. And that'll happen with your son, right? And so Solomon actually has probably the, this, uh, his reign is this time period of the, the greatest amount of peace in Israel. And so finally, there's, there's just this, this sense of that the temple can be built and the temple can be established now. And it's no longer uh, uh, this, this tent that, that can move around, but there's, there's just this, this sense that uh, God is, is placing, him, uh, uh, placing his temple uh, on Mount Zion. Uh, and you can, I mean, the mount's still there. You, we know exactly where it is, so it's, it's interesting. <clears throat> and so Solomon builds the temple, uh, and, and it's just this, this wonderful uh, uh, time of, of celebration, right? Uh, because finally there's kind of this, this permanent fixture. Uh, you know, there's like the, 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 there's, it, 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 it's nice, it's, it's established and stuff like that. <clears throat> And there's actually a festival going on at the time called the Festival of Trumpets, which I, I unfortunately didn't know uh, or remember 
uh, at the on, uh, during first service, but I, I made sure to, to figure it out. Uh, which is just, it's actually uh, this, this uh, uh, festival that's specifically about uh, just re uh, uh, resting, uh, which is a really key thing for, for God uh, uh, and for, for the things, that, for uh, what he wants for his people is rest. Uh, so, so it's this 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 festival of trumpets that that they they dedicate the temple this this great time of rest and and it's beautiful because like uh, uh, so the, the people have gathered here and they're they're sacrificing because that that's just what you did back in the day right and they're they're sacrificing so much it says they're they're so excited they're so pumped up by this 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 permanent fixture of God's house that they're you know they they're they're doing sacrifices of sheep and oxen and they're just like doing so much. Uh, that they can't like they it's hard it's it's impossible to count right and and so it's they're, they're pumped they're amped and so and we see then the the, the priests go in they, they take in the ark and, and when the priest came out of the holy place a cloud filled the house of the lord so that the priest could not stand to minister because uh, of the cloud for the glory of the lord had filled the house of the lord and so uh, uh, this, this, this cloud uh, is kind of hearkening back to something else that we, we didn't get a chance to read through, but that you, you can see in Exodus. Uh, when the, the people of Israel, the, the, when the Hebrews are, are coming out of Egypt, and they're, uh, 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 before they cross the Red Sea, they're being actually physically led by God. He, he appears at night as a pillar of fire, uh, that just is in the center of the, the encampment of, of the, the fleeing Hebrews. And, and then in the day, he, he leads them as a pillar of cloud. And so this cloud, this, this thing, is, it, it represents it in a kind of tangible way the, the direct presence of God. And as it fills in the temple, it, it's, it's, it's this, this uh, a very tangible way of saying that God's physical presence it, it, in some way, shape, or form, that, that that's kind of confusing, is centered in this holy place. Now we know, like God's everywhere, right? And that's not being like, there's no conflict here with that. Uh, you know, we we talked uh, a few weeks ago about Jacob and Jacob fleeing his brother Esau, and part of his anxiety was like, you know, God's kind of have a regionally locked, right? And so. Uh, 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 if he fled the promised land, he, he, he might lose out on God. But God assures him that he's going to be with him wherever he goes. And we see God working in Egypt, and we just see, you know, all, all over the place. God's everywhere. But in a very unique and, and, and important sense, God's presence, this, this cloud, is in the temple, right? And so God's presence is, isn't just, uh, it's, not, it's not intangible, there's a tangibility to it that's really powerful and good and helpful for religious practice. And that's why they're mm -hmm. gathering to the temple and they're, there's, they're getting, you know, uh, you do festivals and you do sacrifices at the temple. It's this place, right? And it's not a tent anymore, so it's not moving. It's there in the center. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we, we read, or I, I should say Esther read, uh, uh, the, the last couple of verses, verses 12 and 13. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in thick darkness. I have indeed built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell in forever. Um, but the temple uh, doesn't stay forever, does it? Esther, what do you think? The temp temple stay forever? What happened to it? Okay. No. Okay. Uh, Daniel, do you have an idea of what, what happens with, with Solomon's temple? It gets destroyed. It gets destroyed, yeah. Do you know by who? That's okay. So uh, 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 much further into the future, and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on it briefly, but uh, the temple gets destroyed uh, by the Babylonians. They come in and they, they take over, uh, uh, they, they take over, uh, 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 what am I trying to say? Jerusalem, which is, is where the temple is, and they destroy it. Uh, but but as much but again as, as we talked about how God's presence isn't stuck there, 
uh, there's actually this great image in the prophet Ezekiel of, of God's presence leaving the temple uh, and residing in Babylon, where his people were taken captive. And so while well, God's presence isn't stuck there, but there, there, there's something to uh, uh, having this physical place, right? And then it gets rebuilt afterward. After about 70 years, the, the, the Jews are, uh, uh, are in captivity, and they're released by the Babylonians, and they're able to rebuild the temple. And, and that's a temple that exists in Jesus' day, right? And so uh, the temple is this, this cool place where, where God's presence is, but, but for people like you and me, like, like, like they're still kind of like a problem, right? What, let's just imagine the temple still existed today. What, what's kind of the problem with the temple for people like you? Harry, you got an idea? Well, so for, for one, that's okay. For one, it's, it's really far away, right? Uh, for two, we're not Jews, uh, so we actually can't go into the temple in any way, shape, or form uh, because we're not Jews. Uh, so so we, we, we don't even get to enter into this, this physical place, uh, this, this tangible place of where God's presence is residing. And even if you are a Jew, uh, you can only go to the inner courts and perform the, the, the function there of sacrificing, uh, but, but you're still mediated away from God's presence. But if you're Lucky enough to be a, a Levite or a priest, you can actually go into a holy place, uh, which which is a little bit deeper in, and, and you get to be even closer to God's kind of physical presence and, and to, to perform religious functions. But you're still uh, uh, separated and, 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 and split off from the holy of holies. And who's the only person that can go into the holy of holies? Sean? The high priest. And how often can he go in? Once a year. You can only go in once a year, and that's to perform a, a sacrifice on behalf of all of the nation, right? And then he's got to leave. Uh, and actually, uh, I didn't mention this in first service, but I just thought about it. Back, back in the day, they would actually used to tie a rope onto the high priest uh, as he went in because uh, uh, God's glory is so profound that he might die, and then they need to drag the body out because they can't go into the most holy place. So, so God's presence, it, it, it's mediated, it's separate, it's distinct, it, it's kind of distant, right? And so we, we, we need, I, I don't know about you, but I want God's presence closer. I want to be closer to his presence. And, and this mediation is, is problematic because uh, uh, I'm not a Jew. And because even if I was, there's still just this, this separation, this distinction. And so... The, the, we, we need something else, right? So let, let's turn to, if you guys do have Bibles, uh, uh, turn to, to 1 John. No one does, that's okay. Uh, and, and also I'll just, I'll just read this, this opening for you. Uh, uh, 1 John 1, I'm going to read the first few verses and I'm going to jump down to kind of the, the fun verse that everybody knows. Everybody knows. So, uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him not anything made, uh, not anything was made that, uh, made that was made. Well, sorry, I didn't say that well, but that's okay. Uh, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So this is the first five verses. Skipping down to verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory the glory of the only son from the father full of grace and truth so who's the word sunday school answer guys jesus jesus was that kathy it was kathy thank you kathy that was awesome uh it was jesus yeah right and jesus is what what do we know about who jesus is he's fully God and fully man, right? And so all of a sudden, 
uh, uh, God isn't just, in, you know, like like his presence isn't just mediated through this, this temple situation. All of a sudden, God's presence is manifested in Jesus, right? That's why in, in Matthew it talks about his name of being Emmanuel, which means God with us, right? And so God with us. So, okay, so let's just take our, 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 our minds back there again and, and think about if we were alive back then. So if, if I want to seek after and if I want to pursue God's presence, what do I got to do? So what, there's still the temple, so the temple still works, right? But you can still go up to the temple, but that doesn't really work out for me because I'm not a Jew. But what, what, what can you do now if G, when Jesus is alive? You can, you can find Jesus, right? Because Jesus is God. So you can, you can, because God, God's with us, and God, God, God was with us in that time, as in the person of Jesus. And so if I want to seek after God's presence, uh, I, I can actually seek after Jesus, and I can find Jesus, and, and I can have God's presence. But, but the problem is, is I'm here in North America, and Jesus was in the Middle East. That is, I mean, that's a long plane ride, much less me trying to just get over there, right? That's hard. And there's still just this, this separation, this distance of God's presence. But if you guys remember back in August, we, we actually had a whole sermon where we talked about, or I had a whole sermon, I guess, uh, and we talked about presence. Do you guys remember that vaguely? And we talked about Paul and what Paul kind of says about, about us. So, so now after Christ has died and rose again, uh, how God's presence is for us as Christians. And, and do you guys remember what, what Paul says? So uh, uh, he talks about the temple and, and, and where is the temple or how is the temple? What is the temple now? With us as Christians. Pastors, do you remember? Daniel, how about you? Karis, were you there that Sunday? Yeah. Do you remember it all? No. Are you, Jenny? It's okay. Sean, do you, do you, do you remember from uh, last Sunday? The, the temple. What's the temple now for us? What does Paul talk about in, in 1 Corinthians, the, the temple of God being? That's okay. No, no, don't worry. So, so in, in 1 Corinthians, Paul talks and Paul says, you are God's temple. You all, y'all, you know, we, we talked about that. Y'all are God's temple. And so so we, and this is what we talked about really uh, 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 when we talked about God's presence, is that, that we gather together the presence of God, because we are his temple. And so, God, if you remember at the, the uh, 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 in the Gospels, Jesus talks about sending his spirit, and then you read in Acts, the Holy Spirit descending upon uh, uh, the, the first Christians who are sitting in an upper room during the Pentecost, right? And, and God's presence isn't like uh, located just solely in the temple, and we have to, to kind of get over there, or at least try to pray towards the temple. It's not located in a person that we have to go find and directly talk to. Rather, the God God's presence is, is among us and with us and, and in us. Right? And so there's there's not this 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 sense of, of distance and separation. And there is still this there is still a need of mediation because because Christ is our mediator, right? The author of Hebrews tells us about this. But but this great vision of, of, of God of us being God's temple and, and, and of God's presence being among us and with us and, and in us is this great vision of our future hope. And so I'm going to quickly turn to uh, the book of Revelation. I don't know how, how many of you guys have read through uh, Revelation. It's, it's, a, it's a fun read. Uh, but Revelation 21 starting in verse 22 is, is where I'm starting. Uh, so Revelation is written by uh, the Apostle John, so the same guy that wrote the Gospel of John. Uh, uh, so, so we read that, that verse a little bit from the Gospel of John. And, and right here he's talking about this, this vision that he's having, that God's giving him. And in part of this vision at this point is him talking about like new creation. So after Christ 
comes again that we talk about it when we, when we can, uh, uh, talk about the creed we're, we're, we're anticipating him coming again judging the living and the dead after that there's going to be new creation this new world this new heaven new earth and, and a new jerusalem this new city that's been established right and so he's talking about just this beautiful new creation and and in it verse 20 uh, sorry, chapter 21 verse 22 and i saw no temple in the city for its temple is the lord god the almighty and the lamb and the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and its lamp is the lamp is the Lamb. By its light will the nations walk, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And the gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. They will bring into it the glory and honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or false, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. And so in this grand future that, that we're hoping for and anticipating and awaiting, where after Jesus comes, he, he judges, and we have new creation. We, we're, 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 we have this physical resurrection, like, like Jesus says, when we're given new perfect bodies. We're, God's presence is no longer separated in, in, in this way, but we're actually going to be amongst him and worshiping him, and he's going to be in the center of this new Jerusalem. And there's, you know, there's, 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 there's there won't be a need for mediation because we will have been sanctified. We'll be perfect. And, and we don't have any sort of separation, but we can behold him and love him and glorify in him and worship him without barrier, without issue. And that's, that's our hope and that's our anticipation. And that's the future that we get to have through the death and resurrection of Christ. And that's why we need him and desire him so that we can we're coming back to this, this sense of, of intimacy in the sense of, of being in the presence of God that that has only ever been experienced by Adam and Eve and that's our future hope and so we we see God longing to have his presence get to, to have us in his presence but, but having these 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 uh, our times of mediation in the tabernacle and in the temple and, and in the person of Jesus and then as his spirit is and in us uh, gathered together. But, but one day we will be able to be in his presence fully in new creation. Guys, just uh, quickly, uh, please stand with me as we, we uh, say the Apostles' Creed. We do this every week because it's good to know and, and, and know what we believe and, and continually say it and confess it. And, and it's good just in case I say anything crazy and we're like, this, this, is, this is good stuff. Now, please say it with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, guys, you can be seated as we pray. Uh, every week we just pray through a, a, a few things uh, that we just want to be attentive of um, weekly. Uh, and as I go through the, the kind of different topics and different things, if there's something that's on your heart that you feel like uh, you want to pray about it, you, you can feel uh, comfortable just saying it out loud. If you don't feel comfortable saying it out loud, that's okay. Uh, you can be quiet, say it in your heart, because as we talked about, that presence is here. The Spirit is within us, and so He knows our hearts. So let's pray. Father, we pray for the peace of the whole world and for the well being and unity.
of the gospel at home and abroad and for all who teach and disciple others. So take that extra hour to sleep and not come early, otherwise you're just going to kind of randomly come in midway into the service, uh, first service. So uh, uh, enjoy your extra hour of sleep, but uh, if you do come early, that's okay. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, guys. So much after you did great. Was that were you nervous? Not really. Yeah. I was just reading out the papers. So yeah. There you go. Yeah. Where is the uh, cool ones? Is it okay if I ask kind of like once a month? Yeah. I guess I can do it like every week. Right? I, well, <laughs> how about that? I'll, we'll do it every other week for me. No. And then, because uh, I want to try to get people on there. And you tell me. Yeah. I know I'm not at mine. Okay. Oh, that's a yeah, she sent us a message. Um, yeah, she, she's got my number, so. Where are you going for the thing you do now? Oh, do you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay, am I right? Because you're talking to me. Oh, yeah, we figured it out, but just in case. Yeah. Is it a high end role? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, right. Sean, it's your sister. <laughs> Have a <laughs> I like the thumbs up. That's nice. Hi, what's, okay, I, what's your name? Hi, how are you? How are you doing? How old are you? Are you like, 